UCSF infectious disease physician Dr. Monica Gandhi joins us to answer some of our questions about this vaccine. Dr. Gandhi, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Well, we know some of those side effects like fatigue, muscle pain, nausea are pretty common, especially after a second dose of the vaccine. But does any reaction to any of the vaccines tell us how our bodies might respond if, in fact, infected with, with or exposed to COVID? You know, this is a great question that people, it's a legitimate question that if you have more side effects, would that mean that you have more of an immune response and you actually do better with the vaccine? Now, to be fair, um, these trials, a lot of people had side effects, like you just said, and even if you didn't have side effects, people did great. What I mean is that people still had incredibly high efficacy even when they didn't have side effects because not everyone had side effects. Mm -hmm. So even though I think it's a fair question to ask, I would not worry if you don't have major side effects after these vaccines that you're not getting the response. I really wouldn't worry about it at all. Okay. Um, and they do need to stratify that data, but no one's worried that you're not going to get an effect. All right. Well, more good news here. New studies show the vaccine is more effective than we thought. So what does that mean for our protection as more Bay Area counties open up? as in how safe is yeah. it to go indoors, go to the school, go to the gym? You know, I think it's pretty amazing that you have the clinical trial data that looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then you have real world data, real world data that, that are being put together that shows that the vaccines are even better than they were in the clinical trials and better than we thought. So there were two New England Journal studies yesterday that were published, one from the University of Texas, one from here in Southern California, that your ability to get COVID-19 after you get vaccinated is vanishingly small. It's 0. 0.00005, four zeros. Um, wow. And that was in the middle of a surge. So they're even more effective. They're 99 point, you know, 99995% effective. That's how good these vaccines are in the real world data. And does that mean that you should feel comfortable going inside after you've been vaccinated? Yes, you should. I think you should feel very comfortable about that. Indoor dining, indoor gyms, if you're vaccinated, Go and do the things that you used to do. So let's talk about reopening schools when it comes to social distancing guidelines in those schools. CDC is now standing by its recommendation to keep students three feet apart instead of six feet as originally recommended in order to get, frankly, more students back to school. Now, some teachers unions still concerned. What are you th what are your thoughts on the change and then re the reaction from the unions? You know, I think what we have to go back to is there never was a magical six feet mm -hmm. number. So the almost the entire planet uses one meter, which is actually 3.28 feet. That's what the WHO recommends as social distancing between human beings, including those in a classroom. And then we miss. There's actually a theory that we mistrans uh, hypothesis we mistrans we mistranslated that into six feet, but the six feet had been going around the U.S. for a long time. Study after study in schools have shown very low transmission. In fact, sometimes zero um, in schools when you maintain masking and three feet. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think they were very right to, to change the recommendation. Salt Lake City data, Wisconsin data, uh, data from many places that three feet was just fine in terms of preserving safety. So I would not worry. I do understand, you know, everyone's anxious about COVID, but I wouldn't worry that there's anything wrong with three feet. And in fact, the data is really super clear. All right, Dr. Monica Gandhi, thank you so much. Thank you.